Hi, Rama. It's week 15, day two of our Bible narrative reading plan. Today we're in Proverbs 6 and 7. Here, uh, Solomon, as he's giving us these Proverbs, he's recorded them, but he originally gave them uh, to his son. Uh, you see that refrain often throughout these early Proverbs. Proverbs 1 through 9, my son, my son, hear your father's teaching, hear your mother's warnings. And uh, so Pro Solomon gave great wisdom. As Solomon was filled with wisdom, he preserved great wisdom to pass on to his children. We know that sadly Solomon did not always obey his own advice, but here in, in Proverbs 6 and 7, he gives practical warnings, practical advice about two very important areas in life, your finances and your sexual life. These are two areas that sadly parents don't often uh, give their children as much teaching and frank advice, candid advice, as Solomon here gives. This is important wisdom, and if it is obeyed, uh, it avoids great troubles in life. It avoids great sorrow. Uh, Solomon is teaching his son, and thereby teaching us, how to handle our finances according to God's word, and how to handle our purity, our sexual life, according to God's word. And so we need this wisdom just as much today as Solomon and his own children needed it in that day. It begins in chapter 6 with uh, advice, practical teachings about finances. And he warns and says, don't uh, put up security for your neighbor. Don't give a pledge for a stranger. He's saying, don't, don't co-sign. Don't uh, put your name involved with somebody else borrowing money. But then he also says, you yourself, you don't need to do this. He says, uh, essentially, you need to work harder. Don't sleep as much. Uh, look at the ant. Look at how the ant prepares for the winter. The ant works hard. The ant doesn't have a chief, an officer, a ruler, someone co coming to command the ant, hey, you need to do this. The ant does it on its own. It prepares her bread in summer, gathers her food for the harvest. And then uh, Solomon's asking his son and asking each of us, um, how long will we lie there? How long will we continue to be lazy? We need to work to diligently provide for ourselves. And then um, he includes here in verses 16 through 19, kind of a, a famous part of this section of Proverbs. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. And the reason the psalmist, um, the, the reason that Solomon seems to do that here in Proverbs, these first six things we can all pretty much agree on, but then he, he shifts to seven to draw that attention to the last one, one who sows discord among brothers. That's an easy one for us to bypass, but that's the one he's especially drawing attention to. It's not that God only hates these six or seven sins. Certainly, any sin is an offense to God, and yet he's drawing attention to that here in verses 16 through 19. But then, uh, the rest of chapter 6 and chapter 7 speaks to our sexual life, our sexual purity. He says, My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. He says, when you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will talk with you. Uh, wisdom is critically important. The book of Proverbs makes that clear. And yet so often we neglect uh, our goal of trying to gain wisdom. Here specifically, he's warning against adultery. He's talking about how easy it is, how pleasurable it may be for a short amount of time. But in the end, it brings destruction. He says you can't play with these sins. You can't mess around with it. Uh, can you uh, hold coals next to? Can you hold fire next to your chest and your clothes not be burned? Can you walk on hot coals and your feet not be scorched? So it is with someone who goes into his neighbor's wife. He's warning against uh, prostitutes. He's warning against uh, adultery. All of these things bring great destruction because this is not God's plan. Verse seven. He, I mean, chapter seven. He continues this warning. My son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments with you. Keep my commandments and live. Verse 4, say to wisdom, you are my sister. He's personifying wisdom, and he's saying keep wisdom as close as you, as you would keep your own sister close. Call insight your intimate friend. And then he describes that temptation, how uh, easy it would be uh, to commit adultery. And then he talks later on in the verses about um, the characteristics of a wayward woman, the characteristics of someone seeking to entice others. Now, in this context, he's speaking to his son, and so he's addressing women, but that doesn't mean, or he's uh, warning his son against women, but that doesn't mean that the reverse isn't true. It doesn't mean that women don't need to learn from this and that men can't do these same things. He's talking about how uh, this forbidden woman, the wayward woman, is uh, setting him up, is seducing him. Uh, she's spreading the couch. She's putting uh, beautiful things. She's attempting to entice him. But what will happen when that enticement comes to fulfillment? 
verse 22, all at once he follows her as an ox goes to slaughter, or as a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver, as a bird rushes into a, sta a snare, he does not know that it will cost him his life. The end of adultery, no matter how pleasurable it may be for a short amount of time, is death. It will cost you everything. And so he warns his sons, oh, now my sons, listen to me. Be attentive to my words. Skipping down to verse 27, her house is the way to Sheol, going down to the chambers of death. The consequences of financial poor choices are bad. The consequences of sexual sin is death. It brings punishment, it brings sorrow to every area of your life. That's what Solomon is emphasizing here in chapter 6 and 7 of Proverbs and how well we would do uh, to take heart to what he is saying. Here's a summary of today's reading. For more information, go to tunemyheart.org.